I mean, she's got to be way up there. She, she give my girls gum every time the church door swung open. <laughs> oh, Uncle Clive, what a precious old soul she was. And I remember one day, you know, all she done was sit at home and watch Christian television all day long. Now, me and her, we went around and around a few times about her word of faith charismatic uh, <coughs> buddies that she sent all that funny to all the time. But that old woman loved God. And she had a good soul in her. And I remember one time Lois said something. <laughs> Lois called it her MS. Well, you know, I got my MS flaring up. That's the first time I ever saw that old woman lose it. I mean, she popped the fuse. She blew up in front of Lois and said, Listen here, honey. Don't you ever, don't you ever, I mean, don't you ever say that that MS belongs to you. I tell you right now, it don't belong to you. It belongs to the devil. Amen. And boy, I'm telling you what, at every time Lois would mess around and accidentally say, My MS, oh, Lord, may hears it blow. It got so bad that when, if something happened around and somebody said, my this, my that, we would hear May Hughes <laughs> in the background. We still hear it today. If, if Lois is somewhere and somebody says, says, oh my, my something, my something, even Lois will say, don't you say that's yours. That don't belong to you. That belongs to the devil. <laughs> it's true. She wasn't kidding. She wasn't telling us. No lie, that, that old woman, I'm telling you what, now she had some wisdom about her. And, and, and she, she knew that you don't cater to the enemy. You don't cater to the things that come along in your life. You don't cave in and say, well, hey, I guess I'll just live with this. I guess I'll just suffer through it. Lord, that wasn't her. That wasn't her. She's like, Lord, no, don't you ever claim something like that belongs to you. That belongs to the devil. But we're believing in Christ. We're believing the Holy Ghost. We're believing for a healing power. We're believing for a move of God in your life. What a, what a struggle. What a... Oh man, I ain't even begin to even tell the details of all the junk that we went through during the middle of all that and how hard that was. I'm going to tell you what, you don't feel like praying. You felt like you have prayed out everything you know how to pray. You do. And, and, and you know, a lot of people say, well, if they only knew what I was going through. Well, I've got a feeling that everybody in this room has been going through something at one time or another. And I don't want yours. And you sure don't want mine. Come on. Amen? Amen. I just, you know, the Bible says, let you bear your own burden. And then three verses later, he says, bear you up one another's burdens. Okay. I ain't never figured that one out. <laughs> but what I think it kind of means is that you got your own struggles, bear your own burdens, but have a heart that's willing to lift your brother, yeah. lift yeah. your sister yeah. up, being able to, to help them carry the load, being able to encourage them, believe God with them, put your faith in the cross and what He did there for them, and believe God for that. Yeah. And folks, I'm going to tell you something now. God didn't all of a sudden one day at South Canton Church, God, He didn't all of a sudden say, Woom! Heal! In the name of Jesus. Nobody didn't blow on her. She didn't fall over. Nobody didn't do some big hooey-dooey thing and put on a big show somewhere. But I want to tell you, that thing was like Moses' experience. It took some time. And in the middle of that struggle, God was there revealing Himself. God was there teaching. God was there anointing. God was there moving. God was there giving wisdom and knowledge and understanding and, and learning how to walk in the, by faith and learning how to walk in the valley. That's what the Lord does. That's what the Lord does whenever you had not got the money to pay your bills and you're wondering where it's going to come from. Hey, quit looking to man. Look to Jesus. Hey, when you're going through something physically or mentally or emotionally, don't think that your resource is going to come from a man to fix your problem, but trust God. That's how come He lets the child of God 
God go through these things. That's how come He lets a child of God suffer through these things so He may teach you that He is the God of the burning bush that is not consumed. That He would teach you, hey, you can't bring anything on your own but take your shoes off because you're standing in the middle of the holy ground. Do you realize the holy ground was in the middle of the desert? Think about that. Some of you have been walking through a desert right now, but Moses' holy ground was in the middle of a desert. It wasn't palm trees and coconuts and singing birds and a cool crystal river flowing by and tambourines and beautiful music. Scorpions. <laughs> Sounds like church, brother. Scorpions and rattlesnakes. <laughs> but I want you to think about that. Some of you have been going through a deserted place. Some of you standing in the desert right now. But the desert was the holy ground that God showed up and said, Moses, take your shoes off. Because the ground you're standing on right now is holy ground. Can I tell you this much? Some of you are in a dry, desert place right now. Take your shoes off. Relax. You're on holy ground right now. You're on the ground, the proven ground. You're on the teaching ground. You're on the place where God is going to show you some things. Keep your eyes on Christ. Keep your eyes on what He's done for you. Keep your faith focused and centered in what Christ has accomplished for you. Because right now is the proven ground. Listen, there ain't nothing you can do to change your situation except mess it up. You can try to dig yourself out in your own way and you'll just get deeper. And you'll get more in trouble. And you'll get more drier and more deader. And you'll wonder where in the world God's at. Sometimes you've got to be like Paul and then when they cut the ropes on that ship I was talking about the other night and they let the wind drive that thing. And sometimes you've got to reach down and cut the anchor and let her drive. Just let her drive. You know, just let God push you wherever He wants to put you and be happy with that. Yeah. Because He's going to fix you. He's going to fix the situation. He's going to make it happen. And if I encouraged any of you back tonight in this place, anybody here? Yeah. 1993, was it? 92, 93, something like that. You was diagnosed. Here we are. 20 years later, not a sign of MS anywhere. Not the very sign of it. She's got a sister over there in Ackworth that is just about an invalid that was diagnosed right after she was. And uh, Ann hadn't done anything but gone downhill from there. But you know, the grace of God is so good. It's so good. Why why some things happen the way that some things happen, I don't I don't understand. But I stand here tonight with a wife that is completely healed from head to toe with multiple scrubs. Amen. 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 It wasn't from the doctor. It wasn't from good vitamins. It wasn't from somebody coming and healing her. No, it was God working in time. God taking the Weeks family through a desert place. Every day, taking the Weeks family through a desert place and saying, here I am. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Going slow. I mean, slow. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, 
and God taking His sweet time. <laughs> Twenty years later, I look back on that, and I wouldn't trade that experience for a million dollars. Because in the desert place, in the dry place, in the place where there was no provision, where it looked like the end was there, where there was no hope, the Lord said, Look, I'm here. Take your shoes off, Bruce. Because this situation, this problem that you're standing in the middle of is the holy ground that I give you right here in the desert. Amen? Amen. Anybody been there? Amen. Anybody there right now? Come on now. Let's be honest. I'm telling you more. I still get a little dry spot here and there. Sometimes a big dry spot. But all I've learned to do is trust Him. I've learned to trust Him. I've learned just to draw up next to the fire. I've learned just to get up next to the fire. Say, so, Lord, here I am. Whatever it is, God, I'm ready to do. That's when Moses said, that's when Moses said, All right, God, I'm ready. Whatever it is you want to do. And he gave him one of the biggest challenges he ever had in his life. Pastor, the biggest, largest church in the world. All those Israelites coming out of Egypt. I would not have wanted Moses' church. It would have been a tough one. Yeah. Arguing, fussing. Yep. Always worried about what they're going to drink, what they're going to eat, where they're going to sleep, how they're going to get out. Always complaining. Sound like church folks, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Stand with me tonight all over the place. Praise the name of Jesus. <clears throat> God's a good God. Let's bow our head and close our eyes all over the place. Why don't you just take the hand of the person next to you? Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for the desert places. Thank you, Lord, for the trials, the tribulations. <laughs> Some of the stuff, Lord, I feel like I could have done without. But I thank you for handing it to me anyway. Hopefully I learned something out of it. Father, I ask that you touch your people tonight. Reach down and touch these folks. Bless them, oh God. Let them be encouraged that whatever they're going through, whatever trial they're in the middle of right now, that you're there with them. That you haven't let them go, you haven't turned them loose, but that you're right there with them, holding on to them. Let them realize they're standing in the middle of the holy ground that you have given them tonight. The burning bush in the place of the desert. You're an all-consuming fire, God. Lord, I pray that you provide for your people. I know you will. Lord, I pray that you heal those that are sick. You encourage those that are downtrodden. Lord, those that have been going through dry, dead spots. Lord, I pray that you just uh, imbue them with your eternal life in such a way, oh God, that they know that they're in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you do. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Bless your people this week. And we'll give you praise and honor for it. We'll ask you in Jesus' name. Turn around to your neighbor there and give them a big hug. Tell them that you love them tonight. <laughs> Tell them that you love them. Yeah, thank you.